up and on strike. Frustration about crime rates, unemployment and lack of services have been building in French Guyana. Strikers shut down schools, shops and even stopped flights last week in the French Overseas Territory in South America. The aim? To get France's attention. And it worked. Today we get the latest on the strike and protests that have paralyzed the region. But first, here's what a few people in French Guyana told the stream about why they're protesting. Le gouvernement français ne veut pas se permettre d'arriver en Guyane et nous dire qu'ils savent ce que l'on vit. Nous ne sommes pas d'accord avec cela. La population guyanaise en a marre d'être méprisée et de ne pas être entendue. Euh, la France doit aujourd'hui euh, reconnaître la Guyane comme un territoire français à part entière. Euh, cela fait plus de 30 ans, voire 40 ans, que la Guyane a accumulé un retard structurel. Euh, très fort taux de chômage, euh, délinquance sur les jeunes qui n'a de cesse de monter. On est loin et déjà que les choses ne fonctionnent pas comme en métropole. La, la vie ici elle est beaucoup plus chère. Donc il euh, y a tout ça en fait. Donc nous, on est tous des Français. Donc on voudrait en fait être traités et considérés en tant que tels. Strike organizers, backed by more than 30 labor unions, have outlined a list of demands they want France to address, ranging from education to infrastructure. The strike has gained widespread support by many in the former French colony who feel forgotten by the mainland. We're sick of it. It's just one of the chants and the hashtags that people are using to talk about the situation. Now, people have flooded the streets in solidarity protests across the territory. Last week, Paris sent representatives to meet and negotiate with lead organizers. Now, while they have made headway on some key areas, protesters want double the billion dollar aid package that France has offered. To help us talk about all of this, in Paris we have Thibault Lachat Verga. He is a councillor for Maturi, the second largest city in French Guyana. Ingrid Sosse is a journalist at Radio Pays in Cayenne. Also in Cayenne, Nathaniel Chateau is a real estate developer who has been involved in the protests. We invited the French Minister of Overseas Territories, Erika Barret, to join this discussion, but she declined. We also reached out to France's offices of the Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, but we didn't hear back. We are grateful, though, for the three guests that we do have, and of course, you, our community online. So, Tiru, first of all, a headline I'm sure you'll be familiar with English translation. Go learn geography. Macron slammed over new diplomacy gaffe as UBS warns of Le Pen shock. Let me just scroll down here. Emmanuel Macron is a presidential candidate hopeful. He was talking, here he is here, he was talking about French Guyana. Let me just give you a little quote here. Sometimes even blocking off the function of the island itself is not the response to the situation, Emmanuel Macron. So, what was the mistake he made? 101 French Guyana information that you should know. Thibaut is what? That French Guyana is not an island. Ah. It's actually the only French overseas territory that is not an island. Yikes. So, you know what? It, it would be funny yeah. if you would not like everyone is thinking that in France, they think that French Guyana is a small island yeah. when it's actually the big one of the biggest region in France it's as big as Portugal so it would be funny if it was uh, not like something like most people actually believe in France sure I mean this speaks to the relationship between French Guyana and mainland France right Ingrid but because French Guyana is a slave colony from France so we belong to France since uh, I think it was in 18 something like this 18,000 I, I'm not sure, but the, the, we belong the, to France. Yeah, the, and, and there was there was a little bit of uh, a back and forth between being a Dutch territory, a French territory, and now it is most definitely a French territory. Milika. Well, yeah. it, picking up on that, uh, the idea of uh, its history, um, Andrea on Facebook says, our story is composed of multiculturalism, slavery, gold mining, and high technology. Even if we are apart, and she puts that in quotation marks there, we've never felt this way. There are a lot of economic and social problems that were ignored for far too long. Another person chimes in on that same feeling of not feeling like they're a part of France. Sia on Facebook says, the relationship between France and its overseas department are complicated. We don't have the feeling of being considered equally. Nathaniel, now that's two people saying that they don't feel like they're considered equals. Is that a feeling you can resonate with? Yes, we, we are yes, not equal because we are far, far, very far from France. That's why people doesn't look at us and doesn't, I don't know, we are not, Treated 
as French uh -huh. for now because we are not in, in Paris. Yeah, exactly. I do, yeah, I do agree with her because I think the distance is uh, the big problem. Um, I'm explaining myself. Um, with the distance, I feel like everything is decided in Paris, but they don't take the reality that we live here. So um, everything that is decided for French Guiana um, is not adapted to the territory. So, Nathaniel, um, give us an I, example of, of a big decision that affects French Guiana that is made in Paris. Give us an example. Okay, for example, um, let's talk about the taxes, the law, the regulation about taxes is not really adapted to the companies in French Guiana for the business because the business is more difficult in French Guiana and they apply the same taxes that we have in France. So that's one of the points that, um, that is not good for French Guiana. And so there's a lot know, of... The taxes uh, too. The taxes, for example, for, for our companies is very difficult because we have a lot of taxes here and um, sometimes you, you have a companies we cannot uh, succeed because of the taxes we have. Uh, that's why we have a lot of unemployment here. 22% yeah. of unemployment in French Guiana, it's too much for France. It's more than France. It's more than all the overseas territory. So it's very, very difficult here yeah. in French Guiana. Yeah. What, what people have to understand is that every law that is passed in France applies automatically to Guyana. Unless otherwise specified, every law that is voted in the French Parliament applies to French Guyana, being tax laws or anything else. And uh, there's a good example of, uh, that I like to quote, is uh, all uh, that applies to recycling. Uh, we have European laws about recycling that is applies to French Guyana, even though French Guyana is in uh, Amazonia, the Amazonian uh -huh. forest, and it's very, very difficult for local government to put into places these European uh, laws. We still have to do it, and we have to pay big fines to comply with those laws. Tibu, do you recycle? No, we do recycle. Right. What, 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 what I was the going to the say is that... The public has to be, yes, know, of Europe, course he does. No, of <laughs> course, but what, what I was going to say is that uh, Europe... Uh, applies like uh, we have to reach, I don't know, I I'm going to say something like 50% recycling in 2020. Uh -huh. This is something that Europe uh, 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 voted. Yeah. And now for local French Guyanese government, they have to comply with those uh, laws and they can't. And they are fined, huge fines, because they can just can't do that. Because the, the, the reality of French Guiana are isolated uh, uh, villages in the middle of the forest and for them to uh, put on recycling and all that it's very very expensive or Im even impossible. Mm -hmm. Let me just bring in Antoine Karam. Antoine Karam is a French senator for French Guyana and we asked his office and we asked him he's like can you just break down what's happening between French Guyana as a territory and mainland France? This is what he told us. The relationship between France and French Guiana is mainly a long history of misunderstanding, unkept promises and protests. And this historical movement, which has gathered thousands of people for several weeks, shows that we still are very far behind when it comes to security, public health, education, land planning and even our identity. So now the people of French Guiana united is showing France that it needs to recognize that uh, French Guyana needs to be in charge of its own destiny. So that's Senator Karam talking about this atmosphere right now where so many people in French Guyana are striking because they want more. More of what, Malika? Mm. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we have a list of demands from people about what it is that they want. Here is just one. This is from Akon on Twitter who says, this shows that despite being part of France, all people want is to use it as a satellite, uh, satellite site. <laughs> they aren't interested in locals' actual needs. So what those needs are, Frédéric just tweeted in, I'm a teacher in French Guyana. It's hard for students and us to work most part of the time as we don't have materials, we don't have enough classrooms, etc. Thibault, can you talk to us uh, about some of the things she's listing here, really infrastructure for education, what it's like uh, to learn and to teach in French Guyana? Okay, what, what you have to understand is that uh, the situation that we are in is the result of 50 years 
of uh, uh, governments uh, putting on uh, uh, badly uh, funded uh, uh, things on French Guiana. For the last five years, uh, the current government has been trying, I've been trying to do better things for French Guiana, but in, unfortunately, it's not enough. Uh, what did they for try education, to do? What do you have, Thibault, what what do you have they, to understand? Thibault, what did they try and do? Because we, don't, as, as I said earlier, we don't have their voice in this conversation. So I'm curious as to what they tried to do. Okay, so for the past five years, the government has been passing uh, uh, several laws and uh, uh, increasing the funds to French Guiana to try to better things. Mm -hmm. But it's, it has been not, in, not enough. Uh, a French uh, 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 parliament uh, and member of the parliament and senator, including Senator Karam, uh, have been trying to get the funds increased way more but the government has not been listening, and that's why we're in this situation right now. But when it comes to education, for example, what you have to understand is that we have an increase of population in French Guiana of 4% per year. That's huge. So we have to build 10 high school and 11 junior high school for in the next 10 years. And local government just cannot afford that. We don't have the public funds to do that. So that's why people are protesting, because every year we have a lot of new students and we, have the fun we don't have the funds to build new schools. And we have a lot of, of, of students here. I think it's, if I remember, it's 12% of students who, who don't have um, a high school diploma in French Guiana. So it's, it's not huge because if I take example in, in the US, we say, OK, it's not enough. But it's enough for France because we are, we are not supposed to have all of these students who don't have diploma. And it's some of, I think, when you are 16, most of them, they left school. They don't continue to, to go to school. So we have a lot of, of, our, of children uh, in the street doing nothing. Hey, and problem. that's the problem. Yeah. So they don't get to finish their education. Let me, let me play you something, Nathaniel. This is Erika Barre. I, I'm sure that you and, and many people who are in French Guyana saw this. This was when she visited French Guyana last week. And she said sorry. Have a listen. It's to me. It's to me. It's to me. It's to me. De ma petite personne, au-delà des fonctions, au-delà des fonctions, toutes mes excuses au peuple qui a né. Pour qu'ensemble, pour qu'ensemble, nous puissions construire le quotidien, mais aussi l'avenir de la Guyane. So that's the French Minister for Overseas Territories. Nathaniel, what's she sorry for? OK, um, everybody, uh, what happened um, this Saturday when she talked and she made the apologies? It was, um, it was in order to start the conversation, the talk with the, um, with the labor leader. So that's why she made the apologies. Mm. But that's not the most important thing for French Guyanese people, because um, this apology looks like a little bit fake, but um, because why? Because why? Why is that fake? Because it's been so many years that we were waiting for something to change, uh -huh, and okay. when the strike started, when the strike stopped there, there two weeks ago, we've been waiting for her like one week, one week and a half. That's not that's unacceptable. That's not possible, and so. Even she made apologize. We think that we think that she made it just to stop the talk, but that's not really real apologize okay. for us. The I'm gonna have to disagree. The action. I'm gonna have to disagree because I know Erica. I've known her for a few years now, and I know she meant it. But what I do agree with that that's not what French Guiana needs. We don't need an apology. We need we need fa we need funds. We need action from no, the government. Action. We do not need an apology. But but I know Erica. Uh, uh, she's a strong supporter of French overseas territories, and I know she meant it. What I do think is that that's not what we need. Like okay, it's said. Okay, now let's move on, and now let's get into actions. Yeah, what, I do agree I think with what people. Nathanael, Nathanael wanted to say is for population. Um, when she made it, uh, apologize, people 
feel felt like okay she just says sorry just because she needs to discuss with the protesters that's why okay maybe she 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 meant she meant it but we didn't really know and people i think i'm, I'm not talking about me journalists but about french Guyanese people who said okay she made apologize but content. Yes, it's not. We want action, yeah, and now that, we want That's response. not what people uh, are asking for. They're asking for funds and actions. We don't want any apologize. We don't need it. We need actions. We need funds. We need the, the government to get into, uh, to listen to what people uh, need in Guyana and to get into actions. No need to apologize. But we have to say that there is a meaning uh, behind these apologies, because this is the first time that the government make an apologies to to the people. And normally it should be a great thing, but we are in a such bad situation that this apology doesn't mean like nothing. But in a normal situation, it will be great. So yeah, we are kind of confusing with uh, this apology. So I, I, I want to chime in here with uh, what our community is saying. Um, you know, at the top of the show, we mentioned that uh, protest leaders have rejected a package of 1.2 billion euros, an offer uh, from the French government um, after France rejected a package of 2.6 billion. Of course, people were asking for 2.6, and they weren't quite happy with 1.2. This is what Sia on Facebook says. The government should understand the daily issues we're confronting and give us the money requested in order to improve existing structures. But what that really means, it's broken down in this next tweet. This is Imam Basharat, who says, the living cost in French Guyana is from 15 to 30 percent more expensive than French, than France metropolitan areas. Since the demonstrations have started, he goes on to say, less food items in shops. And if the strike goes on, maybe after two weeks or more, there'll be no provisions left in the local shops. Ingrid, can you talk to us about that price difference and and do you see it in your own daily life yeah sometimes uh, you can compare to friends when you go to the supermarket things are more than five or six times more expensive than in, in, in France or uh, for example I don't know if you want to to buy I don't have a, a real example but cheese for example cheese it's very expensive here if you want to buy cheese if, if, for example, in, in, in France, you, you bought it uh, two euros, in French Guyana, it will be seven or eight euros. It depends of the product, but it's more expensive. Would it be oh, cheaper I if you went next door everything. to Brazil? For cheese, I'm not sure, but for <laughs> other products, yes. <laughs> yes. You wouldn't buy, you wouldn't we, buy we can, cheese in deal. Brazil, would you? As, as a French woman, I'm you would not sure. buy cheese in Brazil. Yeah, it's for the <laughs> cheese or wine. It's a French, it's a French product, so we are proud of that. So I like my French cheese. So it's, no, no, no cheese. It's actually, yeah. it's actually part of the problem. Everything we have in Guyana is imported from mainland France. Mm. We do not. We import next to nothing from our neighbors. And this is crazy. It is one of the, the reasons why we are in this situation. Because, as I said, every law that is uh, uh, approved in Paris applies to French Guiana. And that includes all the trading uh, uh, things with uh, Brazil and Suriname and all of the things that prevents us from importing uh, food and uh, uh, goods from our neighbors. Everything that is uh, uh, you, you can find at a supermarket in French Guiana is mm -hmm. actually made mo most I, most I, probably in France or yeah, in China. I have a let me, let me, yeah, because, let me just, uh, also, example, Ingrid, let me, let me just illustrate this, just for people who, who just, just this last half hour remember where French Guyana was. Have a look here on my map. So here we have French Guyana, which is here. It's in north of Brazil. Yeah. Right. So we're looking yeah. at the northeast part of South America. And France No, is that's Guyana. That's French Guyana, Guyana there. Oh, sorry. It was Guyana. <laughs> don't, don't be mean. I was trying to look at you and look at the map at the same time. And then all okay. the way up here. Oh, my God. The guests are biting back. All right. All the way up here, we have France. OK. So if you want, yeah. if you want fromage, you want wine, you have to go. It comes here. All the way down here. And look at your neighbors no, who uh, potentially could be everything, here. Everything, everything comes from France. Yes. Everything. And we That's ask remarkable. In, in yeah. And now we ask, we ask for, for gas, for example, because yes. air yeah. gas is expensive too. And we wanted to, to make trade with uh, Brazil or Venezuela or yeah. Trinidad to have gas. But 
Europe, Europe said, no, you are a European country, mm -hmm. so you cannot import gas from Brazil or Trinidad or another country because yeah. it's not um, a European norms, so we cannot deal with them. And that's a problem because mm -hmm. we think that maybe we will have a uh, price more cheap, cheaper more yeah. and not yeah. as in expensive than today. So that's why we don't understand because we want, and that's why people now ask for an independent statue. But I'm not sure it's oh, a, it's a, it's uh, a Ingrid, I am so glad response. you brought that up, Ingrid, because we just got this tweet no, just a minute ago. I'm in like, Listening to this conversation, it, it begs let's, the let's question. Let's agree to disagree so on that. I'm gonna, I, well, I'll, I will hear your, your thoughts, Thibault, on it, but let me read this tweet. Okay. I'm in says, so French Guyana has not thought about independence or they can't afford to do it. We actually heard from a resident of French Guyana who, who wrote into us on Facebook. Marie Selby says, the main solution would be a change of status, being a department to being more autonomous is this the time to call for it Tibu? we have elections coming up in france okay that is two very different things being autonomous and being independent let me tell you something the minute people are going to start talking about independence you're going to see about no one in the street protesting because most people in france in french guiana do not want to be independent what people okay. do want to be is more autonomous is because as i said as of now uh, uh, everything is decided in Paris. We decide next to nothing. I'm a city councillor, I should know. We decide next to nothing locally. Oh. Everything is decided in Paris. What most people want is being having more deciding power in Guyana, but no independence. Trust me on that, I no think, independence. Think, yeah, it's not independent, it's I really think. autonomous. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, let me just, yeah, let me yeah. just check yeah, in with Nathaniel. Nathaniel, uh, in a couple I of years' time, would you want to be independent? Yeah, I think this autonomy status will be the first step to the independence very soon. It will be like in 10 years, 20 years, but we need this autonomy status like New Caledonia, and then that autonomy status will bring us to the independence because we need to be independent. We don't need to stay with France. That's my point of view, and most of people have this point of view, oh. but they don't dare to, to that's say. That's not true. That's they, not true. Uh, very, I mean, that's, I that is we are not ready for that. Not everyone. We are not ready like, for like that. Not even I'm five not percent sure. of people. That's because not true. Using, so, in, in a limited, I am sorry. so guess in our limited survey, two out of three French Guyanians want to stay with France. Okay. In our limited survey. No, way more than that. I'm going to tell you something. In 2010, yes. we voted on these issues. Yes, In 2010, the, we voted. And the numbers were? And do you know why yeah. people decided not to be autonomous? It's because the people that didn't want to be autonomous, they made people believe that by becoming autonomous, it would be the first state step towards yeah, independence. Yeah. So people got scared and they decided but not they to vote to become yes, more let autonomous. Just, let me and so just we pick stayed up. in the state that we're in. Let me pick up for the, the reason why we actually got you all here. The reason why we're doing this show is because of the strikes. This is a Facebook Live from Guyana First from earlier on today. Uh, strikes are ongoing. What's the latest that you can all tell me in terms of how successful are they being? Are people still going on strike? Thibaut, you go first. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hugely, overwhelmingly successful. It's never seen in Guyana. Today, there were 10,000 people in Kuhu. You have to realize that Kuhu is a, it's a like, small city. It has 25,000 inhabitants. And today, there were 10,000 people in the streets of Kuhu. It's, it's, it's huge. It's an, an order of in French Guyana. So people are still supporting. Uh, still, people are still mm -hmm. going to the streets, right. but as I told you, the second you start talking about independence, okay. nobody's going to take like, the okay. anymore. Okay, <laughs> all right, we're, we're okay with autonomy. All right, guess I'm going to take you all online, and hopefully our community watching and watching on TV, you have to go online to stream.aljazeera.com. We will continue to talk about French Guyana and the issues it has right now with mainland France to be continued. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our online post show. We're talking about France's relationship with its overseas territory, French Guyana. So, Ingrid, thank you for sharing a Facebook Live with us from last week. Um, and it was with the two ministers from France visiting, and people were watching, and there were a lot of angry faces until we went outside, and outside there were protesters. So let's start with the inside bit. Let's roll the video. What are we seeing, Ingrid, right now? He said that he can make a plan for French Guyanese with the decision the government will take. Well, um, I can I, I don't remember because and then, but what's things more happen. What's, what's really important is that then you see the angry faces turning into smiley faces because we have. I'm going to translate from French to English. 500 brothers, which is yeah, a, right. a, a campaign group. Do you want to tell us a little bit about 500 brothers? Why are they so important right now? Okay, 500 brother is. Um, some friends, some, some of them doesn't know each other, but it's people who, want, who wanted to say no to the violence, to the insecurity we have in, in French Ghana, because uh -huh. the French, French Ghana is the most deadly uh, over, overseas territory from France. Mm. Actually, I, I remember, if I remember last year, we had 42 or 46 murders, so it's enough. It's, it's too much for us. And the four, 500 brothers said, OK, today we have to take our destiny in our end because nobody does some, something for us. So it's time to go to see the government and said, OK, listen to us. We have problem. We have insecurity here. And we want things change. And that's what this group created. At the beginning, it was only for that. And people joined the 500 brother and said, OK, you want to change our destiny, but here we need change too. So we're going with, with you. And we will ask for the government to come in French Guiana and to, to talk about the problem we have here. That's all the things be, begin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting someone's commenting on that and that security situation. This is Goyan who says, the irony of the situation is that the violence and the robberies are in decline since the blockage of the roads and these protests that we're seeing. Exactly. And, and I see you nodding there, Ingrid. But uh, Nathaniel, with elections coming up very soon in France, do you think this is something that will be addressed, the security situation and the feeling of, of, of feeling unsafe? Yeah. I mean, um, they already start to talk about the situation in French Guiana during um, the election meetings. Um, tonight, there's a debate, uh, actually. Um, it's right now. But it's right now, yeah. It's right now. Yeah. So we, have, we, we had the far right. Yeah, the, there's Marie Le Pen, the far right. And she's always speaking about French Guiana and the situation of the immigration that is the cause of this uh, insecurity, of this lack of safety. Um, we have other uh, candidates. They say, um, OK, we can close the borders anyway. I refer to Macron, for example. We can close the borders anyway, but we need to put more control. We need to put more, more um, militaries, more police. So I don't know what is the good solution, but um, there's, um, they, they, they talk about that. The candidate for the election uh, start to talk about that. Here's an interesting uh, comment. I'm going to throw this at all of you as we begin to wrap up this conversation. Nomad by Trade says, how effective can it be to throw euros at an endemic problem to pretend to be addressing the population's concerns? Mm. It's not just about money is basically what Nomad by Trade is no, saying. No, it's not just about money. Huh. It's really not about money. I mean, money helps. It's going to help build schools and, and hospitals and roads and all of that. But it's not only about money. It's about the way French Guiana and French Guyanese are perceived by the state of France, by France in general, and by the government. And it's about the fact that we need to have uh, uh, public policies that are adapted to Guyanese reality. It's not just about money. But we do need money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course we do. I think um, the thing here is um, we need, I mean, we need some decision about everything, the health, education, um, 
the security, as I talked to you about just a few minutes. Um, so it's not about only money, but we need a vision. We need to see the, in the future, more in the future, what we can do, not only about the money, but about also how to, to make people to have an education about, uh, about what's happening, the, the way they can, they can manage it in the future. So it's not only mm. about money. Mm. Of course. Guess I think that right now, right now, there's a big debate for the French election, and you can bet that one of the topic is going to be Guyana. It's a three-hour uh, uh, debate. It's yeah. going on as we speak, uh, uh, uh -huh. and uh, you can I, I can bet that one of the uh, topic is going to be French Guyana. Everybody's talking about it in France right now, and it is it is a good thing. It's the first time that we. Uh, France as a whole country actually start debating mm -hmm. on what Guyana is, what it stands for, and what we should do uh, for French Guyanis to be uh, just regular French people, you know? Uh, it's not only for French Guyana, I think it's for all the overseas French department of France. Because I think the problem with French Guyana is applying for all the, this overseas territory. So I think, yeah, it's a good time to talk about all these territories and not only French Guyana. And then we do yeah, because it. Because France, France are afraid that all the, all the overseas territory now going in a strike because everybody are looking for us. And people from Martinique, Guadeloupe, or Reunion Island, or Mayotte said, OK, maybe it's time for us to, to go on the street and say, OK, what's happened in our country, too? So I think France now is afraid said maybe okay we have to to talk about french Guiana now before it becomes a, a, crazy. a general strike in in all the overseas country hmm. I ingrid, think they're ingrid, about ingrid you said you know the other french territories might be saying maybe it's time actually our, our, our twitter community is reminding us that maybe it's time again this is hugo uh, i'll yeah. end with these two things hugo tweets in the strikes of 2009 in martinique and guadeloupe are another example it seems like riots and strikes are really the only ways to have france respond so we actually have a message to the french federal government those who are at that debate this is from the secretary general of guyana workers union and one of the lead organizers of these protests and here's what he wants leaders to hear aujourd'hui la france doit écouter le peuple guyanais doit faire de façon à ce que les choses avancent dans le bon sens et enfin on pourra avancer correctement. Thanks for that video comment from David Riman. All right, thank you guests. Thank you for being part of this show. We haven't done a French Guyana show. I'm really glad that we did one today and really appreciated your company. Tivu, Ingrid, Nathaniel, many thanks. Take care everybody.